Welcome in to Runner's Recap. I'm here alongside head coach of the CCU <laughs> men's basketball team, Rod Barnes. I'm Carrie Osep, and coach, it's Runner's Recap season two. We're back. We're back. We're back. You feeling better than ever? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to tell everybody, uh, what season are you entering in your head coaching career this year? This is my ninth year. Um, been here since uh, 2001. I mean, 11. I said 1, 2011. <laughs> but uh, uh, it's starting the ninth year, and I'm excited about it. Yeah, and overall, Coach, you've been coaching for a while. How long you've been you've been in the game of coaching? Oh, just a year or so. No, it's actually, uh, I think this is starting my 30th year of 30th coaching. 30th year. Yeah, yeah, so that much time has passed. You Again, you just you feel fresh and ready yeah. for the new season? I started when I was 10, so I'm pretty, wow. I'm still pretty young. <laughs> no, And you're I, still pretty good, too. <laughs> no, uh, it's been 30 years, uh, 30 years of really a lot of work, a lot of experience, a bunch of fun. Very rewarding time, uh, just watching uh, young men grow and see them getting married and having families and, you know, seeing them being really productive in their communities and giving back to their communities. So I've been really blessed. That's awesome to hear. Well, we are happy yeah. to have you back. And of course, when you open up CCU basketball season, that means the return of the annual blue gold scrimmage. We got yes. a sneak peek of that earlier this week. So we had some fun dance moves. You can see Justin Edler Davis there, uh, best dancer on the team by far, am I right? Well, that's what he says, but we have a new couple of new guys. Uh, Cam, Cameron uh, Allen says he's the best, but also our big guy, Sean Stiffs, think he's the best. So we'll have to see. Yeah, but of course, um, high flying action. It's what people can always expect. But we got a taste of that. You guys were in Canada over the uh, summer there. So what were you able to see from the group of guys so far, at least with that sneak peek before the season? Well, I saw a team that was re very resilient. Uh, we got there, we played three games in three days, and we played the best team uh, in Vancouver the last game. And it was a really tough game. And we were kind of banged up and tired and injured, but our guys figured out a way to win. So it was really encouraging to me because I think it starts us off to a place that uh, we really don't want to lose. But also, if we get in tough games, we've got winners on our team that try to pull us through. Yeah, high energy. That's what you always get with the Roadrunners, right? Yes. And yes. In, speaking of high energy, you're bringing in six new faces to the team. So adding six new guys. And uh, you mentioned some of those names. There's Sean there. but. One difference you can tell with the new guys is the size. Look at that right there, Coach. You got some big guys added to the roster this year. So we've talked about that a little bit, but what can you say? Somerville there, I think he's the tallest, right? 6'10", 6'9"? He, he's he's 6'10". Uh, and Ray's a, a freshman, uh, really has great potential. Uh, really excited to watch him uh, grow. But also, as you mentioned, Jack Schumann is a kid that's 6'8", 6'9", and also Ron Aritas, who's 6'9". And, then Sean Stiff, who's <laughs> six seven, and yeah, so we feel like we needed to add some size and some depth yeah. on the front line. Last year, you kept asking me a bunch of questions about James Subi. You kept saying, "Well, Coach, when he goes out, what are you gonna do?" <laughs> so this year, hopefully, we'll have some answers. When one of our big guys go out, we'll have another guy to put in. I know it does help when you have some depth with the big yes. guys, and I, I know uh, some of the the team has already talked about it. Changes practice a little bit when you have those big bruisers out there. Yeah. They said they're getting yeah. a lot of bumps and bruises, literally, <laughs> out on the court. So, what has that been like to see? I'm, I'm sure you've had teams like this in the past yes. with some Big Ten centers, yeah. but how does that immediately change the game for you? Well, it's, it's really, you know, you get an opportunity to throw the ball inside and get scoring, which we haven't been able to do that the last couple of years, and having an opportunity to do that now. And also, you get a chance to play a certain way more of the time. Like last year when James Suba would leave out the game, we had to change our strategy. This year we can stay with, you know, what our team strengths are. Uh, we still are versatile enough to go with a smaller lineup, but if we want to stay big for the entire game, we can and when you talk about that on the other side of the balance, those athletic, those guys yes. with the speed getting up and down the court, how have the big guys been able to balance that game? Because that's always that's <laughs> always the tough part. You see the big guys that are yeah. good in the paint, but to speed up that game and get up and down the court, yeah. that's probably been an adjustment for them with you guys. It has been an adjustment for them and for me <laughs> because, uh, you know, those guys do a really good job for us inside play, but our team has been built with speed. You know, when you have guys like Zar Perry and – uh, DeMonte Buckingham and Taze Moore, uh, Justin McCall, that's more player, players that play fast and athletic. Now we've added these big guys, so uh, it's really been fun. It's been exciting. 
Uh, and as you said earlier, it's been very physical out there. And <laughs> yeah. we're, we're trying to stay healthy, but I've been really pleased with the way this team is coming together. Yeah, it's a good balance going to be out there on the court. And, yeah. and just for fun, I mean, do you feel shorter on these guys? I do. I do. I mean, I think they I laugh at me some of the time because I'm in the middle of the huddle and I'm talking and they're looking at me and yeah, I'm look looking up. up and I'm saying, do you understand what I'm saying? And they kind of look across me at each other and kind of smirk. So there's been a lot of times this year I've, I've stopped practice and said, do you hear what I'm saying? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, well, I can't see your face. So look down. OK, so. It's been fun, though, but that's, an that's, adjustment that's, a too. Good, that's been an adjustment. <laughs> uh, this team has really, uh, I think, uh, brought a sense of uh, energy uh, to me because, uh, first of all, we have a lot of new players, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of teaching and coaching, but also they're a great group of guys, and they're very outgoing, and they're very outspoken. <laughs> so it's, it's been fun, but also it's been a challenge of trying to put the right combinations and get that chemistry together on the floor. They're a great team and they're really connected and we have great leadership before as a coaching standpoint. Do we go with two big guys? Do we try to go with three guys with size? Do we try to play our smaller guys with our biggest guys? So it's been a fun, but also it's been a challenge. Coach Barnes is up to the challenge. Well, when you talk <laughs> about the adjustment, you talk about the leadership, we got to talk about the returners. You yes. have six guys that are returning to the lineup that were yeah. a core part of the group last year. Of course, you have the the guys. This is Ronnie Reedus, a new guy, but we have um, Taze Moore. You have yes. Justin Edler Davis, one yes. of the captains, and then Demonte Buckingham getting on the court to return to this team. So what can you say about these returners? and what they bring to this group, and that easily starts with confidence. Well, wait, let's, this is what you said, confidence. They're a very confident group of guys. They have a lot of experience. They've played in a lot of games, and uh, they're really good teammates. That's one of the great things about it. They each, every day, they're kind of setting the tone for our new guys. But also, they're spending a lot of time with them, trying to develop a certain kind of a culture and chemistry, which we want with our team. So. I've been really impressed. Uh, as you just mentioned, Justin Davis being one of our captains, DeMonte Buckingham is the other captain, but also Taze Moore and Greg Lee have really stepped in and really helped those guys with the leadership. So we have a strong leadership on our team and we have some experience with those guys. But uh, as far as on the court, our new guys are challenging them for playing time and that's making it really exciting. Yeah, no, that's cool to see. And and I was going to say, or going to ask you about this. So Greg Lee, uh, he is from Rockville, Illinois. I was wondering, yes. is he a fan of the Raptors because Fred Van Fleet or not at all? <laughs> Do you know anything <laughs> about that? I know nothing about that. Because <laughs> I was like, yeah. Rockford Zone. I was like, we got yeah. Rockford Zone right here in Bakersfield. We do. But we do. we're going to see um, some, some good points, obviously, from Greg Lee yes. returning with some confidence. But then also the local Justin McCall, um, right. we saw some highlights from him. Yeah. But he also, he brings uh, the bounce and the spunk to the team just right like more but yeah. what can you say about the athleticism of the runners I mean is that always a key factor for you when it's you're always the team? you know I, I've always uh, talked and tried to recruit guys that could get up and down the floor I'm, I'm more a coach that believes is if you can get to point A to point B quicker than your opponent you've got a better chance of winning so we try to stay athletic especially on the wings because uh, we like to pressure and we like to deny and those guys are kind of in the middle of the field uh, you know, on the court, like cornerbacks or safeties are on the field. So we're trying to intercept passes and stuff. So Justin McCall, I think the thing with him, he's improved so much offensively. He's playing with so much more confidence. And we talked about Taze Moore, which this will be his second year. And hopefully this year he can stay healthy. And uh, uh, we, we've been expecting great things for him. And I think this is the season he's going to do it. It's going to be interesting to see all those pieces kind of come into play. I'm, I'm interested to see how, how Coach Barnes' mind plays it all out with that balance of the size. Well, we're definitely team. going to use you as a resource. So, uh, <laughs> <Try my best>. <laughs> <laughs> I say put the guys in that can dunk and we're good to go. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but, uh, Coach, a big point for you, a big factor is obviously uh, your son, Bray Barnes. Yes. He left the team with graduation last yes. year, but you brought back another son on the right. coaching squad, Brandon right. Barnes. What's that like to keep it in the family? And did you feel like you just need another Barnes out there on the court. Uh, no, that wasn't <laughs> it. Uh, we wanted to try to stay within our, our family in this hire. Uh, we have a bunch of players that are uh, starting their careers as far as coaching, and he was the one that we thought could bring something different to our staff. Uh, I have Coach Conroe, who we elevated to associate head coach during the summer, but 
felt like if we brought somebody here that, first of all, understood and understands what we're trying to do uh, in our program, but also the culture that have been used to the way we play and what we do, but also having a year to be in the G League, he brought some new ideas and some new things that he and I had been talking about last year while he was part of the G League team. And I thought it would be an asset to us to bring him back. So pieces in place, not only on the court, but on right. the sideline as well. Yes. Pretty cool to see. So, of course, we got to mention the schedule here. So you guys have an exhibition game to start off. The, start, the season officially starts off November 5th. Yes. So how eager are you? We're just, what is it, less than a week, a week away? A week away. Yeah, yes. how eager are you to just see these guys and see all, the, all that chemistry unfold right. on the court? Well, I'm excited. Also nervous because, you know, uh, sometimes it gets four or five games, uh, you know, playing guys together that you kind of get a rhythm for them. And that's why they've had me working extremely hard because we've had so many guys that are competing for starting position and competing for playing time. Uh, when you only have six or seven guys, that makes it really easy. But we actually have a roster which 11 guys can have a role on this, on this team. So uh, that's a lot of work with the coaches and our coaches have done a great job. But I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I think we can play several different kind of ways and I think we can match up with a lot of different people with our size right now. So it should just be an exciting season. I was mentioning to our fans, we mentioned the Blue Gold game the other night, and, and I was talking to our donors before, and I said, you need to be here uh, from the exhibition game all the way through the season because this team is going to grow. Uh, Knights will play different. So I think it'll be a very interesting and exciting year. And talking about those challenges, I think that's why you brought another Barnes back. You got <laughs> the younger Barnes, fresh mind, helping coach out. <laughs> yes, that's but true. But we do love to see uh, family and basketball yes. definitely comes together, and we yes. love to see that, so that's pretty cool. So excited about this season, right around the corner here. But right. just for you, Coach, expectations. This is obviously, you know, <laughs> it's we have a lot going on, a lot of, you know, new things for your team that we yes. just mentioned. But right. also, it's the final time for you as a team to make a statement in the Western Athletic Conference because it's your it's your last hoorah in the Western Most Athletic Conference. Time. So it is. so what are your expectations? What kind of goals do you see for this team, especially with that in mind? Well, just because we have so many new players and, and, and I, I've really tried to emphasize it. I mean, let's just take one week one day, one game at a time. Uh, I think we have the potential to have a, a great season, but also I know it's gonna be a lot of work. It's gonna be a lot of sacrifice from our guys because again, as I just mentioned, there's gonna be a night where we're gonna play big and some of those guards aren't gonna play a whole lot. And then there's nights that we may play all of our guards all the time. So it's gonna take a, an unselfishness uh, about this team. But then I think we have the character within our team to do that. And, you know, I, I mean, always we go into the year one to win championships, whether that's the regular season or the uh, tournament championship, we want to be playing postseason. And right. having played three out of four years in postseason, you know, we talk about more of building a tradition uh, of being, making sure that we're in postseason play. So when you talk about winning goals, championships are win one, but also uh, we want to be in postseason play. And I think for both uh, your team as well as the women's team, I, yeah. I've heard that a lot, though. The goal is to, to take care of the whack. Right. you got to do it big <laughs> on the last way out, right? Yes. But we're excited to see that. That's way out there. So we well, got, you got a okay. lot of games before that, so we're going to be looking forward to that. But yes. for you, Coach, um, my favorite part of Runner's Recap, we're going to mix things up. And again, as always, Here any of you go. watching out there, if you have questions for Coach Barnes, sometimes I get tired of having to think of all these tough yes. questions to ask him. <laughs> but send them our way by, uh, I'm going to switch gears here, put okay. you back in that hot seat. And I'm going to ask you, <laughs> there's no hole boarding through yet, but I'm going to ask you, uh, NBA season obviously kicked off with you guys yes. on the night of the blue gold scrimmage. So you got two big teams in, the, in L.A. right now, Clippers and Lakers, two right. new look and improved teams, LeBron James versus Kawhi Leonard. Clippers yes. got the win. But who do you stack? If you're, if you're a betting man, who do you stack the cards with? The new look Clippers or the new look Lakers? I would say, uh, ooh, that's a tough question. <laughs> uh, being here in Bakersfield, uh, I think I probably should pass on this one if you give a pass. <laughs> I like both teams. <laughs> I, I, I obviously, I'm, I mean, I, I'm rooting for the Clippers because yeah. I'm a Doc Rivers fan. Uh, I think yeah. LeBron James is one of the greatest players that ever played. I think Anthony Davis is one of the most talented big guys that 
that I was in the game right now, but uh, just being a coach, uh, I know Doc Rivers. I, I met him. He's he uh, they drafted one of my former players, so we got yeah. to know each other. So I've been an LA Clipper fan before Kawhi Leonard or before Paul George. <laughs> so uh, I would put my money on the Clippers, and then they're a defensive-minded team. And I know some people think the NBA is about <laughs> offense, but. Uh, I just love the way Doc coaches, so I'm rooting yeah. for the Clippers. There you go. See, he had an answer all along. Yes. That's what we wanted to know. It's the people <laughs> wanted to know. And, of course, uh, in the NBA, just across the board, a lot of craziness. And we talked yes. a lot. You were very open, not only about the recruiting landscape, but how that right. kind of trickles into the professional league. Just There's a lot of chaos. <laughs> a lot of chaos. <laughs> so for the NBA league, just yes. seeing all of those big switches, do you think that that's – beneficial for the growth of the league in the game in terms of people kind of being more interested this year? Or is it tough that there's no loyalty, it seems like, anymore with these players <laughs> and their teams? Well, I, I think, you know, the, the, the big scheme of things, uh, obviously you want fans and you want people interested. You want people following the games. And these super teams have started to create that. I think if you separate the teams and, and the players and all of a sudden everybody's kind of mediocre, like, they're talking about L.A. now because of the trades they had. And they're not just talking about that in L.A. They're talking about it on a, a national level. Right. And I think that's what the NBA, I think that's what college athletics is about. There's years that we need for the big blues to be really, really good, to talk about college basketball, to give the other teams an opportunity to knock off, for, you know, for the underdog right. to win. And I think uh, right now, with all the chaos and the movement, <laughs> You know, it, loyalty is obviously, you know, in questions a lot of times, but I think we've just gotten to a business standpoint yeah. of the NBA that now is just all about uh, developing that brand and keeping people in front of the TV. And whenever you got guys like LeBron and Kwa, the whole nation and the whole world going to be watching those kind of games. Yeah, no doubt about it. It's going to get uh, tickets sold. That's yeah. For sure. Now there's some other teams and some other games that you might not be interested in, but <laughs> you will be interested in the NBA to see who comes out of the West, and I think the East is getting better. And obviously, um, mentioning just college and the, the chaos, uh, we you guys were affected, obviously, by the transfer portal this yes. offseason, losing quite a few guys. So you were open about that last year. I appreciated well, the honesty because yeah. it's it's a lot. It's a lot to kind of unpack, <laughs> but just um, in general, how that all is working is that something you had hoped to see for college, or is it something we all just have to get adjusted to, or is it? I didn't want it to see like that. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I am one that has constantly said, I think, on any transfer situation, I think uh, student athletes need to sit out uh, just so that we could keep things fair. There's no one in between for us that they have favor for this school or that school. If you decide to transfer, it's for you to sit out, and if guys want to transfer and sit out and coaches want to take those guys, then that's okay. But I think when guys start to become immediately eligible, and we do have two guys. We have Cam Allen and also Jack Schumann, who yeah. are both eligible right away. But if I had my preference, I would rather for, if a guy transfer, he has to sit. And if you get need to add a year because a guy transferred and not only just be fifth year, but six year guys. But I think it's fair then. You know, we're playing guys this year, just like with us also, that are recruiting fifth-year guys. And they have a totally new team with three or four starters that are fifth-year guys, which, again, that's part of the rules right now. But mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't think it's good for college basketball. And I don't see how it just basically benefits a student athlete. Yeah, I get you. Like I said, it's a lot to unpack, but yeah, it's, it the way, it's the way the game, not only it's for basketball, is evolving. Part of it. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. Yeah. All right, well, part of it for this show, Coach. <laughs> I gave you all the power, switched it back over. Do you have a question for me to end Runner's Recap? This is year episode? two, right? Year two. Well, great. Well, tell me this. In your time here nervous. in Bakersfield, <laughs> uh, what is it that you have found to be besides Runner's right, Recap? <laughs> to be one of your favorite things to do. Favorite things to do? Yeah. Or mm. to cover. Okay, because I was like, it's for sure going to go to my job because I okay. spend a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> covering the sports landscape here in Bakersfield and around Kern County. 
And I will say the coolest thing, and this is this may be cliche, so I apologize if this sounds like an overused answer for most people, but we have the truth here. It's the truth. It's the genuine <laughs> truth. So I I love the passion for sports and not only at your guys' level collegiate. And I know it's a little different because people follow their local guys and you guys yeah. have some and some of the you know colleges in town keep some local talent, but at the high school level especially, the uh, the pride that people have for their schools. Yep. So cool to see. And right. it, it from every sport, whether we're in football season, whether we're in basketball season, soccer season, track, baseball, softball, there's such a love for the teams. Right. And that, I kid you not, doesn't matter how long I'll be doing this job, I will get just as excited for teams winning. And I should probably be a little unbiased. <laughs> that's, that's where I'm going to be very open and honest. But I love the energy and the excitement that teams have. You know, when they're able to win a league a league championship or when they're able to get that big win they've been waiting for, that has been so fun. And it's been cool to kind of connect to the community that way. So right. to meet people and meet great people like Coach Barnes here. Uh, you and your family are awesome. So well, there's, there's good people here in Bakersfield. That's, that's <laughs> great. And the community here is passionate about their for teams sure. and their schools. So I'm just excited to be a part of it. The question will be tougher next week, though. Yeah. Be prepared. <laughs> All right, Coach, as always, thank you so much. We're excited to get this new season of Runners Recap going. Uh, we appreciate you stepping in this first thank week. You. November 5th, start of the season. You guys make sure both men's and women's teams will be kicking off the season. But until then, we will uh, just sit here and chat some more. How about it? All right. All right. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs>